Hey everyone, welcome to the What's New video for September 2022. This release we have updates to our pattern tools, revolve command, T-splines, drawings, and more. So let's get down to business. We'll start out in the design workspace. First up, we've made a change to the pattern tools. Now, when you invoke any of the pattern commands, you'll get a new type option in the dialog box, which can switch between the three different types of pattern. This means you only need one pattern icon on your toolbar if you're into placing them there. Next up, we've added an option to the revolve tool that will automatically project the rotation axis to the plane that the profile is on. This is handy when you might be using a reference for the revolve axis, like one of the origin axes, but the profile is not on the relevant origin plane. This means that there's no need for projected geometry in the sketch, and the axis selection can be that reference geometry without any extra steps. For section views, we've now added a flip option. Previously, you needed to manually rotate the section tool if you wanted to reverse the cut. Now, it's just a simple toggle. New for this release, we've enabled the seed and boundary selection tools for the general design environment. These are super useful for selecting lots of faces on a complex part to speed up things like fillets, creating selection sets, or even specifying surface appearances. Sculpting users get some new goodies this release as well. Now, T-spline files, that is TSM and TSS files, can be directly opened from Fusion 360, either by uploading to the data panel or from the file open menu. Next, we've improved the make uniform command to now include the option of removing T-points. Lastly, we've made huge improvements to the T-spline to B-rep conversion with much more refined surfaces and better edge creation. This also affects generative design results as well as automated modeling results. We have a couple of tools coming out of preview this release. The volumetric latticing tool as a part of the product design extension has reached its first official release, and the Resolve external components functions are also now fully available as well. Check out the links in the description for deep dives into both of these topics. Lastly for design, we have several bug fixes and performance enhancements. A nice little quality of life improvement is that we've added the ability to create a sketch on a work plane directly from the timeline. Nice little time saver there. Let's look at the drawings environment next. For this release, we've made several bug fixes under the hood. The big change on the front end is that it's now possible to open a model directly from the drawing. Previously, you had to find the model in the browser tree, but this new function allows you to open right from the view in the paper spit. Moving on, let's take a look at simulation. As you've likely seen, we have now moved all of our simulation solves to the cloud. This means that there is no longer a local solve option for any of the study types. This change enables our simulation developer resources to stay focused on delivering new features without having to worry about porting specific code to Windows or Mac. As a result of this change, modal, thermal, and thermal stress simulation solves now incur a cloud credit or token cost if you're not using the simulation extension. Linear static remains a zero cost solve though, even on the cloud. If you have questions or concerns about how this will affect your workflows, please reach out to us so we can discuss your situation. Check the description for more information. For generative design, we have a number of changes to look at. First up, when exploring results, it is now possible to filter by generative model. This is extremely helpful when working with designs that may have multiple model setups to account for differences in dynamic behavior or to better suit some of the directional manufacturing methods like two and a half axis machining or additive. Also in Explore, we have now changed the scatter plot view to be more accessible to those with color blindness. You will now see shapes in addition to the colors on the plot. For those users who leverage the costing tool, we have a backend update from a priori, which accounts for changes in global markets. The new costing values will more accurately reflect the current market and supply chain conditions. For generative fluids, we've improved optimization calculations as well as the user experience during study setup. You'll notice new icons and names which will help new users and those unfamiliar with traditional CFD concepts get up to speed faster. That's all we've got this time around. As always, check the What's New blog for the full rundown as well as the electronics and manufacturing videos as well. 
Before we sign off, we just wanted to make a plug for Autodesk University here in just a couple weeks. We're back in person this year in New Orleans, and the classes and community events will be absolutely amazing. If you're interested in attending or need help convincing your manager, check the link in the description below. Thanks again for checking out what's new this release, and we'll catch you next time. I'm